The ruins of rooster pens here suggest that, like many neighboring ranches, it was once used to raise birds for cockfighting. It's a popular, if bloody, sport here in Tijuana. This is uh, Santiago Mesa's place. But several years ago, investigators uncovered a vastly more sinister use for this plot of land. Inside, cooking the bodies. They have a, just a little plastic tube and go this side. Dozens of bodies, victims of the drug war, were dissolved in lye here and the remains pumped into two septic tanks. You use uh, gravity or something like that. Fernando Osegueda heads the group of Baja California residents that led investigators to this site. Come down and go straight. And lately he's worked to turn it into a memorial to the victims. His group is made up of mothers, fathers, sisters and uncles of people who have been kidnapped or gone missing. Osegueda says they've documented around 350 missing persons since 2006. The family's dogged quest for answers has led them to the scenes of some of Tijuana's darkest crimes. The search for this place started with a confession from a man named Santiago Mesa. He was captured in 2009, and when investigators asked Mesa to state his occupation, he said, pozolero, or stew maker. He dissolved bodies for a series of Tijuana drug barons. Mesa said he dissolved around 300 bodies at several locations in Tijuana, including 60 at the former Rooster Ranch. Authorities excavated the site in December of 2012. They found dozens of teeth, pieces of bone, and surgical hardware like knee screws. Investigators took all the evidence to Mexico City to analyze it and to look for DNA in the hopes of identifying some of the victims. Forensic scientists have pieced together evidence of at least 22 bodies at the site through recovered teeth. But Mexico's federal human rights prosecutor, Eliana Garcia, says they haven't recovered any useful DNA. We don't yet have a scientific advance that would allow us to confidently identify any of the remains that have been recovered. People could accuse us of not doing anything, but we don't want to give false hope that reopens wounds for the families. Lye, also known as caustic soda, destroys most of the bone and human tissue from which DNA could be extracted. But forensic experts in San Diego have been able to extract DNA from these kinds of remains. That was my role. Madeline Hinkis teaches anthropology at Mesa College, and she's the forensic anthropologist for the San Diego County Medical Examiner's Office. She testified in a murder case against the leaders of a San Diego gang called Los Palillos. The gang disposed of several victims in lie in 2007. Two Mexican cartel leaders convicted of murder, kidnapping, and torture. Pretty much any tissue in the body has the DNA. Oh, the places that preserve best are in the bones, the, the thick cortex of the bones, which in this case wasn't present. But a lot of time it is done through tooth roots, because even if a body's been burned, those roots are protected in the bone, and the DNA is still in there. And it, it doesn't take very much DNA. Hinkis says when she and other forensic experts started on the Palillos case, they weren't sure whether they could get DNA from remains that had been so transformed. We hadn't seen anything in the literature about it, and oftentimes when the, the chemistry of the bone is this altered, the DNA just isn't any good. But through painstaking efforts, the DNA expert working on the case did eventually find a usable sample from a clump of tissue, and she positively identified one of the victims. The technology is there, but it takes time. There's probably a cost involved. Nobody wants to listen to us. Nobody. In Tijuana, Fernando Oseguera says he's frustrated with the lack of results from the government's investigation, but he's learned to be patient. His son, a 23-year-old engineering student, was kidnapped in 2007. Oseguera is still looking for him. This here is just part of what Santiago Mesa did. And he didn't dispose of all the bodies. Many were buried in different parts of the city. He and other family members of the missing keep searching for answers. They get anonymous tips through Facebook and email about where to look for evidence. They form search parties, knock on doors, talk to neighbors. 
For us, it's urgent. We want to know what happened with our loved ones, so we have to take the initiative. The Mexican government says it hasn't been able to identify victims at any of the locations used by Santiago Mesa. At this site, just a few miles down the road from the former rooster ranch, the waxy remains of dissolved bodies are still present, exposed, ignored, anonymous. This is a body. Quieres conocer la verdad. You want to know the truth about what happened. We're seeking out the truth here, and the government is obligated to give it to us. In eight years of work, with hundreds of missing persons cases, Osegueda's group has only been able to return the remains of eight people to their families. How many bodies stay here? Jill Replogal, KBBS News. Look at this.